I'm Gat. What an entrance. This is how the audience is introduced to Jay Gatsby, the protagonist of Fitzgerald's great American novel, The Great Gatsby. Published in 1925, the novel tells the story of Jay Gatsby, a self-made man with faith in the American dream, who believes that he can change his past and successfully rebrand himself. He tries to win his old love Daisy, who is now married with the upper-class millionaire Tom Buchanan, only to lose everything in the end. The spatial and temporal context of The Great Gatsby is central to the narrative. The story takes place in New York of the 1920s. The advance of modernity, urbanization and financial prosperity in New York during the Roaring Twenties is immortalized in Fitzgerald's classic novel. In this video essay, I'm gonna be focusing on Buzz Lerman's 2013 film adaptation of the novel and investigate how it maps the New York of the time, combining a contemporary and postmodern take with the aesthetics of the 1920s. I'm going to explore how Gatsby is associated with New York's financial and technological progress, as well as with the city's inclusiveness, through visual links related to the urban setting. The first symbol I'm going to be focusing on is New York's skyscrapers. They emerge as a dominant symbol and contribute to the city's imaginability, that is the way we imagine and construct the mental limits of the city in our minds. Associated with great heights, the skyscraper becomes a symbol associated with money and stocks in the film. Early on, Nick mentions that Stocks reached record peaks and Wall Street boomed in steady golden roar. The visualization of the scene in the movie is done by representing vertical piles of golden coins. It is no coincidence that the piles of money greatly resemble the shape of the tall New York skyscrapers, as the city's financial capitalism creates a distinctive urban space. Moreover, a visual color link is established between the skyscrapers and money, since both of them share the same dominant color, gold. The city's technological progress is reflected in New York skyscrapers, which are artificially lit thanks to electricity. In a shot of New York's night skyline, the tall skyscrapers glow. In other words, the material side of New York is directly linked to New York's intangible side. Gatsby is quickly established as a representative of New York, becoming himself a symbol of the city's prosperity. In a shot including a collage of newspapers, headlines announce that Gatsby cashes in and invests in skyscrapers, once again bringing together money and skyscrapers while adding Gatsby to the mix. In fact, it is important to note that in this picture of the newspaper, there is a collage of Gatsby in front of the vertical piles of money that were previously associated with New York skyscrapers. In other words, Gatsby's money become tied with New York's financial future. Once again, colors are telling and strengthening Gatsby's relation to New York. Even in Fitzgerald's novel, yellow and gold are applied predominantly to Gatsby. Fitzgerald himself considered naming the novel The Gold-Hatted Gatsby, before moving on to The Great Gatsby. In the film, this color motive is further highlighted. Much like New York skyscrapers and the city's signature Times Square, which is bathed in yellow lights, the party scenes in Gatsby's mansion feature a color palette reduced to white and gold with a spot of blue. Much like the skyscrapers, Gatsby's mansion acquires a gold color thanks to electricity. As a byproduct of modernity, electricity and its association with the color gold bring Gatsby and New York side to side. Gatsby's affinity with New York is further reflected in the similarities his own house in West Egg shares with the city of New York and more specifically the speakeasy bar he visits. Both of them are what the urban theorist Kevin Lynch would describe as not. In other words, strategic spots in a city into which an observer can enter. Knots function as junctions, 
and are the convergence of paths, meaning that nodal points in a city are marked for their openness and inclusiveness, two qualities encapsulated in both Gatsby's Mansion and the Speakeasy Bar in New York. Indeed, both of them are overcrowded and constitute multiracial points of convergence, which allow for the mingling between different social classes and ethnic groups. And I mean everyone from every walk of life, from every corner of New York City, spilled through Gatsby's door. This reflects the city's positive attitude to modernity. As a result, New York is designated as a modern and inclusive city, something that is additionally highlighted by the fast-paced editing. This type of editing reflects the mobility, both social and literal, and the great speed of modern life in New York. However, gradually, New York's openness is challenged and its promise of the American dream is deconstructed. This happens as soon as the city of New York changes its affiliation with Gatsby and becomes associated with Tom. Let's investigate a bit further into Tom. He functions as a foil to Gatsby. Tom embodies the exact opposite qualities of the self-made Gatsby, since he is a representative of the Midwest old upper class. As literary critic James Mallard maintains, a counterpoint technique is intentionally utilized in order to pit characters and settings against one another and underscore their differences. The setting associated with Tom is his neoclassical mansion in Eastwick, which is an ad in the sense that it is a barrier which closes one region of another, since only a very limited number of people can enter the mansion. As a result, the Buchanan mansion is the very opposite of Gatsby's own mansion, which functions as a knot. Although New York is imagined as an open city, there is one place that functions as a net, and this place is associated with Tom. It is no other than the city's landmark luxury Plaza Hotel. The Plaza Hotel is a net in the city, allowing only those who can afford it to access it, and barring all others from entering it. It is no coincidence that in this scene, Gatsby's takedown takes place and Gatsby loses everything. Gatsby is framed against the modern and open New York, while Tom is framed against the Plaza Hotel's suffocating walls with their old paintings, a symbol of conservatism. The different backgrounds of the characters create a visual juxtaposition between the two. Since the Plaza Hotel is an ad, it is no surprise that Tom emerges as the winner. But with every word, Daisy was drawing further and further into herself. As the Plaza Hotel's connotations with old money and the aristocratic upper class come to prevail over New York's inclusiveness, New York is revealed to be a city where modernity is just a facade. This indicates that this city was never called to begin with, but gilded, only having the appearance of something precious and special. As a result, New York's yellow lights give their way to a cold blue color palette for the rest of the film, the very opposite color of yellow. This color transition signifies Gatsby's downfall and eventual death. Being a gilded rather than a gold city, New York's promise of inclusiveness is proven to be an empty one. It is telling that Nick remarks against a blue New York that After Gatsby's death, New York was haunted for me. And he describes the city as My once golden shimmering mirage. This line reveals that the once called New York has vanished with Gatsby's demise once and for all, since the city's main representative and its progressive associations and attitude are deconstructed. Just like Gatsby, New York belongs to the past for Nick. This final scene reveals Nick's disillusionment with New York, since he is framed within an anonymous crowd, indicating his alienation from the city. It is worth noting that this scene employs a much slower editing than the one that was used previously in the film, 
in order to denote New York's change as an urban space for Nick. So what's the takeaway? New York's visualization in The Great Gatsby reflects the city's financial and technological blooming in the 1920s in terms of color and editing. Throughout the film, various urban settings in New York become associated with Gatsby, who represents the city's progressive modernity and inclusiveness. Nevertheless, New York's gold promises fade, and the city's openness is proven to be superficial, as evidenced by the city's affiliation with Tom Buchanan. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.